I want to write disgusting love letters. Love letters so full to the brim with icky, sticky affection that it runs off the pages and gets all over you, like tree sap or slug slime. I want to write love letters that make people throw up, painfully conscious, unlike a fever, more like getting sober because they are so needy and bad. Oh man, I want to sound like I'm 13 again, but with a brand new vocabulary. I want to write about love, but the gross monstrosity of love. The, I would lick a Grand Central Station bathroom floor if it was for you, kind of love. The, I would drown in a pool of your congealing blood if it was your wish, kind of love. I want the letters and poems to be such a disgrace to literature that they become an American book trend. Oh yes, filthy and awful and disgusting and comma spliced in all the wrong places. I want my love to be the opposite of skinny indie love. I want my love to be true southern fried chicken, deep fried and butter battered twice. I want to write about a gluttonous love that rends the idea of healthy separation and space into a screaming mass on the floor. I want to write about a love that aches, but not some sexy, broody, teenage angst ache. No, I want my love to be like growing pains in my chest, like something I really feel as though I need to take up with my primary care provider. I want love that hurts if I don't have it, but not some cheesy, overdone, you're my drug love. No, I mean I have asthma, and you have my inhaler. I want to write about a love that makes me sick, that makes everybody around me sick. Screw cute couples, screw sweet dates. Let's be horrible. I want to write about a love that's so grimy and greasy that I worry about getting pimples from it. Give me the unhealthy, the desperate, the keening, the gross, the uncool. Give me the mouth-breathing, life-sucking abomination that we miss out on these days. Thank you very much.
surely as the tides rolling through to the moon. Starlight crystallizes in me, shine dark backward time. Once upon a time, there was a sadness called Tears who lived in the silence. Tears was sad because she was all alone in the silence. It was so lonely that she began to cry, and she cried for a long, long time. She cried for such a long time that a big pool of water formed around her. Pretty soon she was floating. As she floated, she began to feel somewhat better, but she was lonely because no one else was there. She began to feel light and wanted to feel even lighter, so she kicked off her heavy shoes and began to dance in the water. As she began to dance, she noticed many other beings had gathered there. They were all playing in the beautiful pool of tears. They smiled at the sadness and sang as they played, splishing and splashing about. The sadness began to play too, then as they played in the water, a song rose up in each of them, and they all began to sing. As she joined in, the singing grew louder, and the song rose up and grew more and more joyous, and soon the tears were so happy she couldn't even be called a sadness anymore. The being that had once been a sadness truly became a happiness, and her new name was Smiles. Even after the pool had dried up and all had returned to their homes, smiles remained a happiness. Although she was back in the silence, she was still happy. For somehow, now that she was a happiness, even the silence was friendly. And smiles the happiness sang to herself all day long. think of him when he was four. I see the father in the boy with blocks and trains and little toy soldiers. I see the father in the boy off to play with his flag unfurled. Wants to travel in his make-believe world. But he'll come in to help with dinner. I see the father in the boy. I think of him when he was 10. I see the father in the boy with a baseball glove and a fountain pen. I see the father in the boy in a hurry to be a man growing up as fast as he can and when he'd kiss us both good
good night I'd see the father in the boy I think of him when he was 18 I see the father in the boy out with his friends in his muscle machine I see the father in the boy got his own life he's on his way he'll be moving out one day and when he says I love you mom I see the father in the boy I think of him a man sister I see him now a man full grown I see the father in the boy and he's got children of his own I see the father in the boy lessons he learned along the way love he gave us every day he now shares with his little ones who play i see the father in the boy i see the father in the boy I see the father in the boy. Thank you. To take the wrong road is to arrive at the snow. And to arrive at the snow is to get down on all fours for 20 centuries and eat the grasses of the cemeteries. <clears throat> to take the wrong road is to arrive at woman woman who isn't afraid of light, woman who murders two roosters in one second, light which isn't afraid of roosters, and roosters who don't know how to sing on top of the snow. But if the snow truly takes the wrong end, then it might meet the southern wind, and since the air cares nothing for groans, we will have to get down on all fours again and eat the grasses of the cemeteries. I saw two mournful wheat heads made of wax burying a countryside of volcanoes, and I saw two insane little boys who wept as they leaned on a murderer's eyeballs. But two has never been a number, because it's only an anguish and its shadow. It's only a guitar where love feels how hopeless it is. It's the proof of someone else's infinity, and the walls around a dead man and the scourging of a new resurrection that will never end. Dead people hate the number two, but the number two makes women drop off to sleep. And since women are afraid of light, light shudders when it has to face the roosters. And since all roosters know is how to fly over the snow, we will have to get down on all fours and eat the grasses of the cemeteries forever. A poem by Federico Garcia Lorca. Last night, the drumming stopped. Ancient war cries ceased as a magnificent boulder loosed itself from the mountain, and I surrendered myself to its fury. Underneath its weight, I crept and wept, but did not mourn this loss, shedding and shredding of skin. With crude tools, dull switchblade, shaved off the hole, uncovering reptilian underbeing. Centuries old skin, a leathery hide, veined with cracks, scars, scratched and carved, tattoos, war paint, history, miles traveled on foot and knees, bloody stones wedged in cracked flesh, while my kin hide beneath their own hides, husk and fur and stubborn shells, thorny burrs in a lonely landscape, just me walking among them, standing, ghosts and me too, hungry, haunting, endless wanting, something from them, but what? Love, acceptance. Instead, this penance, walking, crawling, teeth and gravel, biting, salty, sabulous emptiness, entangled in this, 
sister and brother. But one more battle-worn, torn, only me, it seems, crying, only me, wanting, while they wished I'd stay, safe, neat, and clean, perhaps unseen, lean, careful and precious, untangled, simple, sweet, very neat, yes, just very neat, the comfort of tidy and clean. But there's a beast in the landscape, shredding the earth under her feet, a tyrannosaur, devouring the weak and fearful. I sleep in that prehistoric night, ripping, tearing, shredding flesh, cut these guts out of me, sever cords, snap bones, roll it up, wrap it up, launch the mess down the mountain like a mad boulder, tearing up roots and limbs, lacerated blood vessels, showering trees and crimson typhoons, the tyrannosaur's meal of glutton, shame, and fear. In an insecure world of beast on beast, territorial madness, these red-stained walls of forest chambers, and my ancient skin molted, finally. This erosion of skin is where I begin, simple and stolid as rock, a stone of centuries. No need for rain, I'm washed clean, welcoming new, fresh blood, raw skin, unweathered but tested, soul rested, somewhere overnight, in a powerful light, a brilliant time, a dime delivered to me from a bountiful pocket, changed to renew, a divine transaction, overnight trade, carved a self from a blade, and laid my old skin down with my true kin, trees and wolves and ocean, a simple pebble on the shore, rolling in and out with waves, and the weeds and a sun rising over the sea. Thanks for listening. All I want to do is lie around in the shade with There is nothing in the world I would rather do. Your lazy arm around my shoulder and the sigh of a careless breeze. It feels just like heaven despite all the evidence of earthly life. Like this green carpet of grass And a flock of wispy clouds Wandering across the sky And the fragrance of some flowers Blooming nearby, dear It's very clear to me no place I'd rather be than lying around on this hot, hazy day in the shade. I'd rather be 
than lying around on this hot, hazy day in the shade. A letter to Meanie Bambini. You don't scare me, Meanie Bambini, not anymore. The stuff of nightmares in my childhood, you're just a whisper of a ghost now. Or maybe you're something more. You came into my life, the answer to my grandmother's prayers for a man to marry my mother and give me his name and keep us both safe forever and ever, amen. But we weren't safe. I learned fast to stay out of your way. You are dangerous and unpredictable, and it was all my fault. I must have done something wrong for mom to marry you because you beat her, and your loud voice scares me, and I can't stay out of your way when you come looking for me. I believe you when you say what's wrong with you. I don't have an answer, but I know it must be true. Something wrong is me. Your words hurt more than your fist or the lashes from your mesh and metal belt whistling on its way to my small body. I used to think I bore the brunt of your rage because I was the oldest, but now I know that I didn't have the safety of your blood running through my veins, that I was the chain that had trapped you and bound you to this life, that sometimes your pain is so intense that you have to lash out because if it stays inside, it eats you up like acid. But either way, you're dying, curdling like old milk left out overnight, stuck in a cycle of shame and perdition, flailing about, blindly searching for retribution. Your lashes land on a poor proxy, mom, or me, or one of your own. Flesh of your flesh, blood of your bones, even they weren't safe. Now I know why you raged when I drank too much joy, when I ate too much of life, when I claimed my right to take what I wanted. Freedom came with graduation. Liberation looked like moving away, or so I thought. Your fists couldn't reach me there, but your words were embedded in the grooves of my brain like the wrinkles on an old man's face. Who do you think you are? You can't do that. Don't get too big for your britches or I'll cut you down to size. Shut up or I'll give you something to cry about. Meanie Bambini had taken up residence in my mind. He's harder to avoid now and he never stops reminding me of my limitations, my failings, that I am never enough. But wait, stop. Finally, I remember that I can drink joy and take bites of life, that my words have more power than the words of a ghost, and I lay down new lines in the well-worn grooves of my mind. Filling in the cracks of can't and don't and not enough, I'll tell you exactly who I think I am. I am someone who tries and fails and risks and succeeds, and I drink deeply of joy, and I take big, bites of life, and I write stuff like this, and my words have power now. Where is my brain? Where did it go? I used to have one a long time ago. I have been searching. I even looked under a chair. But then I realized that I don't even care. Now where is my man? Where did he go? I used to love him a long time ago. But I can remember how it used to be when you would reach out and touch my soul gently. Where is my son? 
where did he go? I used to know him a long time ago. Well, I fell right down upon my knees the day the good Lord took him away from me. The day that the good Lord took you away from me. Sorry, I'm shaking. <laughs> Mom, with her head in her hands, on the toilet, not bothering to close the door. Trembling lips grip a plastic tube. She drags each breath up a steeper hill. Minutes after the breathing treatment, Mom falls asleep. I leave without waking her for dancing with the stars. The family room with no hospital bed or oxygen tank. A realtor calls it an open space. Thank you. Peach and pear.